kids everywhere in, in the United States know something about Rosa Parks. They know that in 1955 in Montgomery, Alabama, she sat on a bus and refused to move when she was ordered to move so a white person could sit down. And that triggered, with Martin Luther King and the Montgomery bus boycott, that triggered the, uh, you know, the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Something happened before that, which is particularly important, is that nine months before Rosa Parks, a 16-year-old girl who was going to an all-black high school in Montgomery, Alabama, Claudette Colvin, was sitting, like Rosa Parks, in the, in the front row of the black section of the bus in Montgomery. She was doing what the law said. The white section filled up. The bus driver pointed at her and said, you, go stand in the back so this white person could sit down. Interesting about that is that right across the aisle from her, there was an empty seat. And the reason that Claudette had to move and the white person couldn't just sit down in the empty seat was the law said that a white person sitting across an aisle from a black person implied equality. So she was told that she had to move. And she looked at the bus driver and said, the Constitution allows me to sit here. Imagine how that went over on that bus. I mean, we hear these sayings, we hear the dates, we hear the people, we, what happened, you know. But just be there emotionally for this for a second. You know, what did the white people in the front of the bus do when this kid says the Constitution allows me to sit here? This is 1955 in Montgomery. People who stood up against white power like that often had their houses blown up, their schools blown up, their churches. Terrible things happened. People were lynched for doing this kind of thing. So here she is doing this really risky thing. You can imagine that the black people in the back of the bus were scared to death that there'd be some kind of horrible event that would happen right there. But she kept saying that, and the bus driver got off the bus, he went and found a phone and, and called the police. They came and dragged her off. The whole time she's um, saying, the Constitution allows me to sit here. The case that went to the Supreme Court about bus segregation in Montgomery was not Rosa Parks' case. It was Claudette Colvin's case. So this is really important that, you know, again, like with Samantha Smith, you know, a serious, real change in American history can take place because of the actions and the courage of a young person. Years later, uh, a man named uh, Philip Hose from Portland, Maine, wrote a book about uh, Claudette that won the National Book Award. And he was awarded the prize in New York and he invited Claudette, who's now in her 70s, to come, she was living in Brooklyn, to come to the award. And he, he gave his speech to accept the prize, and then the reporters there all ran up to her. And they said, Claudette, what were you thinking? Why in the world when you, did you not move when you realized what the possible stakes could be? And she said, I wanted to move. I tried to get up, and I felt Harriet Tubman's hand on my shoulder pushing me back down in that seat. And she said, I tried again, and I felt Sojourner Truth's hand on my other shoulder, pushing me back down. And then she said, history glued me to my seat. History glued me to my seat, which means that she had these role models that she wanted to be in the company of, and she had to act so that they would approve of her. This, this idea is very much behind what the Americans of Tell the Truth Project attempts to do, is to provide those kinds of models for kids, adults too, because all of us are in these situations where they call, you know, we're called to do something courageous for whether big or small. And if we've got models that are the people we want to associate with, to be recognized with, in the company of, it makes it a whole lot easier.